Hi, I'm Dan. Welcome to the Airbrush Garage. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, thanks for coming back. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to do a basic flag. I'm really going to concentrate on how to get the flag to roll, some ripples, and a fold. So we're going to concentrate on three techniques of the flag. I'm going to keep it basic, and you're only going to need a few colors to create a flag. When you're talking about the American flag, really, we're talking about red, white, and blue, right? Well, we're just going to add a little bit of black and some opaque white. So my illustration colors here is what I'm going to stick to today. And you could use Wicked as, you know, if you'd like as well, if you're you know, going to be doing an exterior application. For this particular demonstration, I'm just doing it on a panel. It's not going to go outside. So I'm going to use my illustration colors. And I'm going to be using some Wicked because of the opaque white. And you'll see how I incorporate the opaque white into this project. So if that's something you're interested in, please stick around. Consider subscribing. Hit that bell so you get future notifications. A thumbs up would be great. A couple comments, good or bad. Really helps out with YouTube algorithm. It's really helping this channel grow, and I really appreciate that. Don't forget to check out all my Amazon affiliate links for the products I use in this video and all my other videos. And with that, let's get started. So before we get started, I'm just going to go over real quick what I use to lay this out and how I laid it out. So we're going to be going over two main things today, and that is how to get a flag to look like it's rolling. And we're going to go over a fold if the flag is folded. So what I started with was with some transfer tape. Now I have some 12 inch transfer tape. I also have a roll of six, but I use transfer tape. You can do this on a piece of paper and make a paper stencil as well. I prefer transfer tape. Laid out my flag here. And as you can see, even the, the stars, nothing is very, you know, nice crisp. They're, they're, they're all over the place as far as, you know, the wrinkles and everything goes. That's going to help lend to the effect of or the illusion of the rolling as you'll see as we go. So I'm going to be putting a roll in here and I'm going to be putting a fold in here. The other thing I did when I marked out my flag, I always mark it whether it's white or red. Okay, because I'm going to be utilizing an aluminum panel here, which I scuffed up with a Scotch-Brite pad. You always want to do that on an aluminum panel because you want your paint to be able to stick. If you're going to paint on something shiny, it'll just peel right off. A lot of times I get you know questions, well, you know, I painted on my panel and I lifted off my tape and it took the paint with it. Well, a lot of times it's because you didn't scuff the panel. So after you're done doing your layout, you're going to want to take an X-Acto blade. And I have a video on how to cut transfer tape, so I'm not going to be going over that in this video without cutting your substrate behind. But I will say you want to make sure you have a new blade in here and it's very sharp. But as you cut each line, you want to put an X by it because as you're doing things, you get distracted. Believe it or not, you'll forget which one you cut. You'll come back, you cut over the same line. Next thing you know, you're not cutting through tape anymore. You're cutting into your substrate. So that's just a real easy, quick tip. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the blue background. I'm going to peel this off. You'll see how I'm going to leave the white stars or the stars behind because of the white background. I'll maintain the white underneath the stars. Something else really essential. I got this when I used to do signs back in the day. It's a weeding tool. Absolutely love these things, not only for, as you see, the Cricut videos I do, but for transfer tape as well. The weeding tool is just a great tool when you're doing this type of work. And I'm going to want to keep this background because I may need to put it back on. So if anything, I'm going to need to at least keep this edge. The rest of this stuff up here, I'm not too you know, concerned with if I rip the tape, but I do want to keep this edge because I may want to put it back down here so I don't get my reds and stuff like that up into my blue. All right, so I'm just cutting an edge out here and I'm going to take that and I'm going to set that aside because I'm going to need those pieces a little later just to put back in. So keep the separation between, you know, or keep the colors off of my blue part when I'm doing my reds for the stripes. As you can see, I got two parts to the blue here and that's going to be where the fold is going to be created. So as you can see, I'm leaving that bottom half on and I'm just taking this out in the middle. I don't need, I can just discard this. I don't need this. So that's going to be where my blue is. Now you can see right down along that line is going to be the edge of the fold. So that's going to create the separation. And as I put my blue and I put my folds up into the blue, 
I'm gonna be creating that with a darker shade of blue. I'm gonna add a little black, and I'm gonna use that for my edge of my fold as well. So once I create that fold along that edge and I have my blue spread in, then we can take off the bottom and then it'll create the separation that we're looking for. So I kind of want to start planning out like, you know, where my folds are going to go. So I'm going to be able to take that strip, like I said, and put it back and that's going to protect my edge when I'm doing my reds on the stripes. And I'll put that back in. Then I have my other piece I can put back in to protect the fold as well. So let's just flood this with a little bit of blue. And again, build it up slowly. I like to put two light coats on before I start hitting it a little heavier. Make sure those coats are dry in between. It really does help. If you get too heavy too fast, it doesn't go on real nice. The paint almost seems to separate. You don't want that. You want a nice even coat here. Now here's where I'm going to add a little bit of black to my blue. And it's going to appear almost black, but now if I spread it off to the side, you still would see a very dark shade of blue, but going over to blue, it's going to appear black. But I just like to do this, it's just not so abrupt, it's just straight black. So as you can see on the masking, it really does look like a real dark blue. But as you'll see in a minute, once I take the tape off, it really does appear as a dark shadow. I'm really using a bounce technique here where you're just really letting the overspray kind of do the work. So basically, you're, you're more on the tape than not. Now I'm kind of planning out my highs and my lows. So where the flag rolls up is going to be a high, where it rolls back down is going to be a low. Now there's a couple different techniques I'm going to try here. I'm going to be trying some with the stencils or the shields. And I'm giving it a soft edge. And what I mean by that is, it might be hard to see here, but I actually am elevating we're keeping the shield elevated up off the surface about a half of an inch. And that's going to give me a soft edge. Same technique here using the big shield. Now there are times where I'm going to want a hard edge and I'll lay the stencil right down on the substrate. But right here I just want to keep it soft. Just want to kind of get an idea of where my folds are going to go. Now here's where I'm going to be taking that tape back off. Oh, and as you can see, I peel some paint off of my board. And that's because that's a real shiny board and that paint's been on there a while. But that's what I always talk about, you know, scuffing up your surface. If you don't give your surface any tooth or any bite to grab that paint, your paint can peel off. That's a very good example. Now you can see why I set those pieces aside so I can lay them back in here. Now I'm going to be peeling off the bottom part of the blue. And again, leaving the stars behind. And this is where we're going to create our fold. So first let's flood it in with some blue. Same thing you get up top, a couple light coats before you hit it with a little bit of a heavier coat. Flood it in there. Now I'm going to come back with that dark mixture again, the blue with the black.
Let's take these stars off. So right now the stars are just flat, they're just white, they have no depth. So before I get any further, I wanted to take them off because now that I'm going to be coming in with my shade color, I'm going to want to start shading the fold or the deepest parts of the fold with this shade color and I'm also going to want to go right through the stars with it as well. Now keep in mind we're only doing the lowest of the lows here. We're not coming in with any white until a little bit later and then we'll do the highlights. So I'm just employing a couple different techniques here. Like I said, I'm keeping the shield up for some soft line, putting it down for a little bit of hard line. Now this is a really cool technique too. Now I got my transfer paper up over that, and as you can see, I just use the side of a pencil. It gives me a really crisp line of to where I want to cut because I want to cover that whole blue area to protect it from when I'm doing the stripes. And again, not that I'm going to need these red stripes, but I always like to save my transfer tape over to the side just in case I need to put it back in. So now I'm going with some scarlet red here, and you can use any red that you like. The same thing with the blue. Use the cobalt blue, like I said before, but you can use any blue that you like as well. But the key here is that you put a few light coats on. As you can see how I ran a really light coat going down, and then I'm coming back in with a heavier coat once it kind of like my base coat dries really important technique that you don't try to flood it on too quick, too fast. Now we'll just take the stripes off that is going to create the white stripes and set them aside as well. And what you're also going to notice here too is where we're going to create the fold, you're going to see that the red and the white can't match up exactly so it looks like it's folded. If you have the matching up exact on each side of the fold, it'll take away from the effect. So here I'm with some straight black. And I kind of just wanted to go around that edge again, using mostly the tape. So I'm going to go a little freehand here. I'm just going to touch some stuff up. I got some white left behind from the tape. And I needed a, a nice shadow edge around it anyway. So I'm going to use some stencils here, but mostly from here on out, it's going to be pretty much freehand. So I just wanted to establish my line of my fold. And you can see again, like I was saying, where those two red lines or the two stripes come together, you can see that they don't match up exactly. And it's going to give it the illusion of a fold. That first line I put down, I thought was a little too sharp. So I'm just going to go in here with some freehand. And I'm going to keep it you know, nice and loose, nice and light, and just start putting in where I want my fold. And again, think about your lows. When you're looking at the rolls in your flag, think of the high spots and where the low spots are. And you want to run those black lines right through the low spots. And you'll see in a minute how we come back with the white to hit the high spots, and it's going to make that roll. Right here is going to be the most rolling part of the flag. And again, I'm keeping this stencil up off of the substrate so I can keep the line soft. So it creates an edge. It gives you a slight sharp edge, but 
yet keeps it soft. Big difference from when you put it right down onto the substrate. As you can see, I'm using a lot of different stencils and templates. I just use whatever's at my disposal, whatever I can find, you know, as, as far as the shape that I'm gonna need. So don't be afraid to, you know, reach into your box or just use whatever you have around you. I've already used just, you know, a regular straight, you know, piece of copy paper for a nice straight line. Use it all the time. Now I'm up in the blue area for a little bit. I'm, I actually have that blue-black mix in right now. And again, it's, it's more towards black, but it is mixed with a little bit of the blue. And as you can see, I'm going through the stars here because I don't want those stars to look flat. And I'm just building up those ripples. So I really wanted to keep this video kind of basic where again I really want to concentrate on the rolls and the folds so I really didn't get into you know stitching between the stripes or anything like that I just really want you guys to understand the low points and the high points and the really cool effect it makes. So now I'm coming in here with some white. So now I'm gonna start hitting the highest points. The high points are gonna be obviously anywhere where the low points are. And for now, just to keep it basic and simple, basically where you put your two low points, you wanna stripe right between them in your high point. Okay, and this is really gonna bring out the ripples and the rolls. Again, just pretend your stars aren't even there. Just wherever you got, just go right through them. And it's amazing. Once you start adding these highlights out, it really raises it up towards you. And again, as you can see, I'm just coming in here freehand, keeping it soft. And I do have opaque white in here. I'd like to mention that. So it's off the wicket line. And I like to use that on something like this because with the transparent, you'll get more of a blue shift, especially if, you know, going over some blacks and you still will get a slight blue shift over that. You still will get a slight blue shift with the opaque, but the opaque has better characteristics to be able to cover, you know, the darker tones without getting that big of a blue shift. Sometimes you can use the blue shift, you know, to your advantage. But in this case, when I'm doing flags and stuff like that, and I want it, you know, some coverage, because I have to go over the reds. I like using the opaque white. Again, by going freehand here, you can just really keep everything soft. As you can see here, I really went a little crazy on that black with the fold, where the stripes are. And you'll see in the end that I use the opaque white to push a lot of it back and lessen the dramatic effect of it because I just felt it was a little too dark. But that's the good part with, especially like the opaques, you can push you know colors or tones back and forth with them. I mean, you can do it with the transparents, but it's a lot more difficult. And 
I'm just kind of working around that blue area where again, I want to push some of that black edge back and bring out some of the white highlights as you can see where it comes right up between the blue and the stripes. So that's kind of what I'm doing right here. I'm just working around with stencil, finding you know, a shape on a stencil that matches uh, the rolls that I have or the curves that I have on that blue. So just switch back between your black and your white and just go in and just detail it. Just have fun with it. Add a little here, add a little there. Step back a few times, take a look at it. It really does help to step back and look at your work. You'll see a lot. All right, there you have it, the basic flag. It's really amazing what you can do with some black and some white to make something that looks 2D look 3D, where you're you know, putting your blacks in for your deepest shadows or lowest lows and putting some white on in between to bring out and pull out your highlights and making it look like it's raised. So as you can see here, it didn't turn out too bad. You got quite a few techniques that you can play around with with this flag that we just went over with everything from the stencils, raising the stencils up to get your soft line down for your hard lines. Got some freehand techniques in here. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something from it. If you did, please consider subscribing, hit the bell. You know the drill, thumbs up, comments. It all really helps out. I really appreciate you guys. We're growing at a nice steady pace and it's all because of you guys. And with that, we'll see you in the next video.